Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As you can see, we're already off to an amazing and wonderful day of worship today. And I welcome all of you who have come and gathered together with us, both here in the sanctuary as well as online, that together we might be a community of faith that lifts its heart and mind and voices in praise of God this morning. This certainly is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. I do welcome especially visitors and guests who are with us this morning. It is always a great joy for us to share our worship of God together with you. I hope everyone will take time to sign the friendship pads. You can usually find them at one end of the pew or the other. As you fill out that pad, just pass it down to those who are seated beside you. And then as it makes its way all the way down, pass it back so that perhaps you might get a chance to know someone in your row seated with you today that you do not know as well. If you are a guest or visitor, I do hope that you'll include your name and address or email, phone number, some other way that we might be in touch with you just to say thanks for worshiping with us this morning. I do want to invite all of our guests and visitors to join us for our Unity Welcome Coffee. It'll be in the Fellowship Hall immediately following the service today. We would love to have you come and join us for that time as well. As you know, and as you can see from the bulletin, today is a special musical service for us as the choir and our special guests are helping us to present Vivaldi's Gloria this morning. This is going to be a truly wonderful morning of worship for us. Because of the service we're doing today, there's no official time with children this morning, and so we want to invite families, if you would uh, be willing to take your children as we sing our first hymn, you'll just take them back to the narthex, and they'll meet the folks for children and worship and nursery there in the narthex this morning. So please be sure to be able to do that as well. We are in the midst of the Christmas and Advent season, and thanks to all who were a part of the Christmas auction and the birthday party for Jesus this week, both wonderful times and great success. I hope that you are taking advantage of the Christmas post for sending cards to your Unity friends. Angel Tree gifts are due today, as well as we will also receive the Christmas Joy offering as a part of our service today. There's information in the bulletin and also envelopes in the pews if you'd like to participate in that. This coming week, we have the Festival of Carols on Tuesday night. Uh, next Sunday evening at 5 o'clock is our God with Us, a service of healing and hope in the historic sanctuary. So I hope that you'll come and to be a part of that important service together. Looking ahead, we have our outdoor service on Christmas Eve Eve on December the 23rd, four services on Christmas Eve, and then a 10 o'clock service on Christmas Day. So we certainly have wonderful opportunities for worship together in the next couple weeks. The men's prayer breakfast meets this week, lunch bunch meets this week. There's a Women of Unity um, shower for Pastor Molly this, co this coming Saturday, so be a part of those as well. As you're considering your end of your giving, we do encourage you to continue to remember, as you faithfully do throughout the year, Unity Presbyterian Church. We are, as you'll see from the last newsletter, uh, roughly about $30,000 behind, kind of where we would average be during this season of the year. So just raise that to your attention as you are participating in all the many ways in which you give thanks through good stewardship, not only at Unity, but throughout our community and throughout the world as well as we approach this end of the year. We do have one special minute for mission this morning to remind us of the wonderful things going on in our children's Sunday school program. So I invite Hayden to come and share with us. Good morning. For those of you, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Hayden Sova. I'm a second through fifth grade Sunday school teacher, and I'm here to represent the team of wonderful teachers and assistants I work with. I want to talk to the parents and families here this morning. Parents and families, from someone who attended Sunday school as a kid, it truly is such a wonderful place for your child to grow their faith. They have the opportunity to interact with other kids their age in a welcoming environment. They gain a better understanding of how to use the Bible. And most of all, they see what being a follower of Christ really looks like. Throughout class, we look at stories from the Bible and discuss certain illustrations from the lesson. We play games and do crafts that go along with the story. Looking back, Sunday school is where I really started learning about Christ and applying it to life outside the church, where I learned how to use a Bible, where I felt comfortable to ask questions when I didn't understand something. Of course, we had a ton of fun, too. 
I have my wonderful Sunday school teacher, Miss Megan, to thank for that. I became a Sunday school teacher so that I can give kids the same wonderful and influential experience I had. I think I can speak for the whole team of teachers we have when I say we want nothing more than to see our classrooms filled up again, bringing with laughter, curiosity, and community. Jeremiah 1, 6 through 7 says, Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. We are called as a congregation to help them see how vital they are to this church, how valuable and loved they are by Christ. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to find me or Miss Catherine, and we will be glad to assist you. Thank you for your time, and have a Merry Christmas. Jesus says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. Advent means coming. Today we light the first candle as a sign of hope. The second candle as a sign of peace, and we light the third candle as a sign of the coming of Christ. The third candle is the joy candle. Our joy is in God and in his son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. The world says worry, and we say rejoice. The news says fear, and we say rejoice. The world says be happy, and the church says be faithful. As we light the third Advent candle, we pray for hope, hope. Peace, you say peace, and joy.
and trust that Christ's glory draws near. Let us pray. Holy God, your prophets have long spoken of the one who would come to save us. Now the promise is fulfilled. Now your glory draws near. Send us as messengers of your way to go and tell all the world of the wonders we have seen and the good news we have heard. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. As we worship this morning, may we together say, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Scripture reading this morning comes from the Psalm Book of Israel, Psalm 96. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth, sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day, declare his glory among the nations his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are his sanctuary. 
Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
with words drawn from a traditional prayer associated with the lessons and carols. Dear people of God, in the season of Advent, it is our responsibility and joy to prepare ourselves to hear once more the message of the angels, to go even to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. As we have been moved by scripture and song, we remember the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion against God until the glorious redemption brought to us in the Holy Child, Jesus. Truly glory draws near. As we wait for the glory of dawn that will break upon us, let us pray. We pray, O Lord, confessing our failures and shortcomings, and ask that you renew in us the vision of your perfect kingdom, which is the end of all our strivings and the consummation of your loving purposes for us and for the world. In word and music, we give voice to the hope set forth in the scriptures that truly your kingdom will come. We pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace and justice on earth, for unity and mission of the church for which Christ died. And because Christ particularly loves them, let us remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lowly and the unloved, the aged and the little children, as well as those who do not know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. We trust in your promises, O God, that hope will not disappoint us, and at the last all will be made new. So we ask that you might grant to all people a new trust in your good providence and a new obedience to your sovereign will. For to you alone is due justly all glory, honor, worship, and praise, which we offer up in the words which Christ himself has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning we have been given the gift of the word through gifts of song and music and melody and voices. And when we receive these gifts, we are changed and transformed and our lives are impacted by them. Now we have the opportunity and the invitation to be gift givers. We are invited to give our gifts, our talents, and our time and our treasure. Because when we do, there is change and transformation through the work of God in the world. So let us give today generously and with hope, let us receive our morning offering.
Let us pray. God of glory, your gifts are never ending. We come to you with grateful hearts and we thank you for the gifts of this season especially. Please receive all that we offer today and help all that we share further your love, your hope, and your joy in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To go forth from this place as our service of worship concludes, may our lives of worship and service begin anew. And may we begin with a word of thanks and praise to God for all that we have received today. As this song fills our hearts, may it fill our lives in every place we may go in this week ahead. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.